Hey everyone and welcome back. Today I thought it would be fun to take a look at 20 common household items that I don't own. And these are all things that in the process of simplifying my life I either decluttered or never owned in the first place because I knew that I would never use them if I owned them. So I'm excited to share this list of common everyday items that I don't personally own with you. But as I go through this list, be sure to comment down below and let me know if you personally own any of these items or maybe if there are some that you've personally chosen to declutter as well. All right, well, let's dive right into this. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already, but let's get started with the first item that I don't own and that's a belt. I find that belts are often considered something of a wardrobe staple and there was definitely a time in my my life when I owned several of them and used a couple of them occasionally, but I definitely didn't wear them enough to justify keeping them. So what I've chosen instead to do since decluttering them is simply to keep and to buy only pants that fit me well, that don't need anything held up or anything like that. And for me, decorative belts are honestly more of a nuisance that keep me from being able to eat than anything else. So I really don't own any of those either. Okay, item number two that I don't own is a hairbrush. And I have very fine, thin hair, which oftentimes you can't necessarily tell because my hair is more curly and has volume, but I have extremely thin strands of hair. And so for me personally, hairbrushes actually damage my hair a lot when I use them. When I used to use a hairbrush regularly, I would always find my hairs splitting and just generally damage occurring to my hair because of the hairbrush I was using. So instead what I do now is I mostly use my fingers to detangle my hair. And then a few times a week, I'll also use a bamboo wide tooth comb just to get any knots out of my hair, but it's far more gentle and actually is a lot better for my hair than my hairbrush ever was. All right, number three is a tablet and I have never owned any kind of iPad, Kindle, or any other kind of tablet device. And this one really goes back to simplicity and functionality. I have a phone, I have a laptop. So what really can a tablet do for me that either of those two can't? For me, owning a tablet would just be one extra device that realistically I don't need. Number four is dry shampoo. And I have so many girlfriends who swear by dry shampoo and it's probably the one hair product that they couldn't live without. And even though I like the idea of dry shampoo, I've tried it several times from several different brands and I've never found it to work particularly well for me. When push comes to shove, if my hair is greasy, the only thing that's really going to eliminate that for me is a shower. And so I would prefer just to take one of those than to apply some kind of spray of dry shampoo that is questionably going to work for me. Honestly, maybe it's just my hair type, but I've never found what I liked. Next, five is cookbooks. And I found that when I did used to own cookbooks, I would never actually touch them. I would always rely instead on family recipes or Pinterest to figure out what meals I wanted to create. And maybe it's just me, but I would far rather make a recipe that has glowing five-star reviews on some amazing food blog or try a recipe that was referred to me by a family friend who knows my tastes and then to try some random recipe in a cookbook, which I would questionably like and might turn out disastrously. So a couple of years ago, I did end up giving away all of my cookbooks and really I haven't looked back since and I still end up getting to eat some amazing food. Number six is a bit of a category, but that's that I don't own a bike, skateboard, longboard, rollerblades, etc. Any kind of wheeled recreational vehicle. I don't know. I don't own yeah, a bike, a longboard, a skateboard, anything like that. And at various points in my life, I have owned most of these, whether that's a bike or a longboard. But in the past few years, I have really fallen in love with walking. Walking has really become my preferred mode of exercise. And so when my bike broke a few years ago, I simply chose not to replace it. And then a few months after that, I ended up selling my longboard too, simply because I wasn't using it. If I use something once or twice a year, most of the time, unless I really love that activity, that isn't enough for me to justify keeping it. Okay, number seven is CDs and music subscription services. So CDs is something that I've talked about in the past, but several years ago I digitized all of my CDs and 
decluttered the physical copies. But with this one, I did recently take it a step further by canceling my Spotify subscription. And here's the thing, I do like music, but what I found in just looking at my listening habits is that I was going to podcasts and audiobooks over music nine times out of 10. If I was making dinner or driving somewhere, I would pop on one of my favorite podcasts or listen to an audiobook and my Spotify subscription, my music, went unlistened to. So I did the math and realized that paying $10 a month to have ad-free music to listen to twice a month, maybe, really wasn't worth it for me. Number eight is word signs and mass produced art. And I have talked about this before, but personally, I love displaying art that is meaningful. So if you look around our home, almost all of the art that we have was either painted by Christopher or myself, or was made by a local artist. I really enjoy having meaningful pieces where somebody poured their time, attention, and love into the work of art that they were creating. Those are going to bring me joy in a way that a mass-produced piece of art or a pithy saying or a live, laugh, love ever will. Number nine is fake plants. And personally, I don't love the look of fake plants. They all look fake to me even some of the more higher end ones. And I get that for a lot of people, they either have difficulty keeping plants alive or they live in an apartment or in a home that doesn't really get a lot of natural sunlight. So it's difficult or impossible for them to keep plants alive. And even though we have rooms like our bathroom and our kitchen in our apartment that don't get enough natural sunlight for me to keep a plant alive in them, and thus a fake plant might be helpful, I've chosen not to own any of them because for me, plants have this life bringing and just a joyful aspect to them but I don't get that same feeling from fake plants no matter how realistic they look and so I just choose not to own any of them. Number 10 is that I don't own a standing mixer whether that's a KitchenAid or some other kind of device. I have a wooden spoon and a whisk and I'll use whichever one is more relevant to whisk up batters or to make bread or whatever else I'm looking to bake. I think that counter space is very precious in a kitchen and I would rather not clutter it up with something that I'd only be using occasionally and that something a lot smaller and a lot more versatile could actually do the exact same job. It might require a little bit more elbow grease, but I don't mind putting that in. Next, number 11 is foundation. And I used to own pretty high coverage foundations and would use them to cover up my acne and to, I guess, just hide my natural skin. But a few years ago, I got rid of all of my heavy foundations and switched to only using a tinted moisturizer. And what I found was that my skin actually cleared up dramatically because I wasn't globbing tons of product onto my face and instead was using something that was far more light and naturally formulated. All right. Number 12 is glasses for every kind of beverage. And I always find it funny when I visit someone's house and they've got the short cups, they have the tall cups, they have the red wine glasses, the white wine glasses, the margarita glasses, and so on and so on. Just because companies make glasses for every beverage under the sun doesn't mean that I need to own them. Christopher and I like to keep it really simple in this area. We have one set of glasses for drinking water out of and one set of wine glasses, which we'll use for any and all fancy beverages beverages that we drink. Number 13 is cotton balls, makeup removing wipes, and reusable cotton pad. I feel like most women I know will use at least one, if not multiple of these options to either apply or remove their makeup. But personally, I choose not to own any of them. There was definitely a time in my life where I used to use makeup removing wipes religiously, but once I began to understand the environmental impact of them and how much waste they actually create, I simply switched over to using a washcloth, which was something that I already owned and beforehand was actually going unused. It was a really simple decision for me and I love it because it allows me to use something that I previously really just didn't use often. Number 14 is air fresheners. And I used to be a huge patron of Bath and Body Works and literally used to buy air fresheners by the dozen, but it's been several years now since I've bought an air freshener. And what I realized is that A, the scents in air fresheners typically are very fake. And what they end up doing is actually mask odors without actually freshening the air. So now if I want to freshen up the air in my home, I'll use the age old method that actually works. And that's that I'll just open a window or a door. It's so incredibly simple, but it does a great job of freshening the air and is one less product that I need to own. 
And if I am looking for a scent and just want my home to smell nice, I can always light a candle. Not only will they make the air smell lovely, but they're also incredibly hygge. And so I can add a lovely vibe and an atmosphere to my home. Number 15 is that I don't own any musical instruments. And I did used to play piano for 12 or 13 years. But in the past several years, I really haven't felt a draw to play the piano or to learn any new musical instruments. And even though I've had people offer to give me a piano that I could play on a few different occasions, I've turned them down each time because I know myself and I really don't believe that I would use it if I were to own one. Number 16 is that I don't own any bracelets. And I love the way that bracelets look on other people, but every time I've owned them myself, I always find myself getting annoyed with them being too large for me and clanking around on my wrist, causing a lot of noise and just generally distracting me. I like wearing jewelry as an accent and for all that it adds to an outfit, but if it becomes a hindrance or an annoyance for me, I am not going to want to wear those items. And for me, bracelets pretty universally fit into that category, so I just don't own them. 17 is bath accessories, and this includes bath bombs, bath salts, those bath trays that you can rest a book on while taking a bath. I don't take baths, and as such, don't own any of the paraphernalia associated with taking baths. And it took me a while to get to that place, but when I finally realized that I simply don't like baths, I ended up using up or giving away all of the bath-related items I had and have stuck to showers ever since. Number 18 is a physical calendar. Personally, I really prefer having a bullet journal where I can keep all of my life admin organization and productivity aspects in one place rather than having a physical calendar here, a to-do list here, a journal here, and having it all being separate. Having all of it in one place in one little book for me is far more practical than having all of those physical items. And so specifically a physical calendar is just one item that I don't own. All right, number 19 is a bit of a female specific one, but that is that I don't own pads or tampons. And I switched to using a menstrual cup as a great period alternative several years ago and really haven't looked back since. I never loved having to buy boxes and boxes of pads and tampons that I would go through and then have to buy again and again. My menstrual cup is something that I only have to own one of and it's lasted me for years and will last me for several more years on top of that. And so I love the fact that it's one item that replaces a lot of items that I'd have to buy. And on top of that, it really makes my periods so much more simple and painless. And then finally, number 20 is that I don't own a Keurig or traditional coffee maker. I do love coffee, but for me, tea has always been my first love. And so while I love going to the coffee shop and ordering a latte or a cappuccino or drinking a cold brewed coffee at home, for me, I never really wanted to invest in a coffee maker because I knew that it wasn't something I would make super regularly. And once again, I know that there are a lot of people who can hardly imagine living without a coffee machine, but for me, it's something that I've never had a strong desire to buy or to own. All right, well, that's the list. Those are 20 common household items that I don't own. I hope this was a fun one for you and that it maybe gave you a little bit of a glimpse into how I decide what to keep or what to get rid of and what's actually going to add value into my life. Now that you've heard the list though, I want to know, are there any of these items that you personally own or maybe some that you've chosen to declutter? Or was there an item that popped into your head while I was talking that you don't own personally? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below what that might be. I would love to hear about that. And if you're here for the first time and you enjoyed this video and haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button below for more simple and intentional living inspiration and videos coming at you twice a week. Finally, be sure to follow me on Instagram. I am at ashlyn.eaton on there and I'll have that linked up in the description box below. That's everything for today's video though. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.